concerned about this issue. It's just going to take time to build critical support. And the reason is, is if Republicans pass this, Democrats would control the state with almost the same majority right now that Republicans control it. The Fox is not going to hand over the keys to that house to us. But, but we get to elect, you know, this is the best thing about American democracy. If we don't like these people, we get to decide that they don't come back to these jobs. We can elect Republicans, and we certainly must elect Democrats that believe in gerrymandering reform, but Republicans in the House and the Senate would be foolish to just hand us these bills. We're going to have to fight for them or replace the people making the decisions about them. Right, but the Democrats are the ones who are saying that they... I'm not going to be ready to sit down this kind of side of conversation about how awkward this is. It's going to happen no matter what. It has to happen now. There are some Democrats that are slow about it, but keep in mind, a third of the Democrats in the state house voted to ban abortion two years ago. Like I said, we need to make sure that there are better people making these decisions, and that means in our house as well. Just so you're aware, there is an organization, Fair Districts PA, that you're, you're familiar yeah. with. And also, for everybody else who may not be familiar, currently now, there are two different processes for carving districts or drawing districts for Congress as there are rather than what we use for the state legislature. The legislative process, there's a legislative process for drawing them for Congress. The one that everybody's talking about otherwise is the one that draws the districts for state representatives and state senators. That's the one that uses the committee that draws that up. I just want everybody to understand it. Under SB 22, it will be one committee that also, that, that draws the lines both for the congressional seats as well as for the Pennsylvania State Legislature. I too think that the pendulum is swinging more towards SB 22. That people are really getting, you know, starting to understand the process, they're angry about it. And I think it's going to be very hard for those of us who are not supporters of SB 22 to defend it. I'm a co-sponsor of the bill, by the way, so. <laughs> Thank you. All right, let's um, let's say thank you to this amazing. I'm so grateful to all of you for being here. Now we go to speed dating with advocates. I'm going to ask them to come up and introduce themselves quickly, and then you are all welcome to move on into this room where we have tables set up and you can chat and shop around and see what floats your boat. So, I want to start. Good afternoon, my name is Adan Susmani, I'm the director of Make the Road Pennsylvania and Make the Road Action in Pennsylvania. Uh, we are the largest Latino organization in the state, um, which just happened to be Center here in Reading is where we have our first organizing center. We're also in Allentown, Scranton, Hazleton, Wilkesbury, and we're soon to spread uh, farther east. Um, while we are a Latino organization, we are not an immigrant organization. We are a justice organization. From our beginning, we've been about all issues of justice, whether that means LGBT equality, whether that means workers' rights, whether that means defending women's rights to abortion, education funding. We are about all of these things. Um, and I believe that it's really because of all all of those things that we are now under attack. Um, in the past election, every single precinct we worked in performed 20% better than precincts just like those precincts where we were not able to work in. And we believe it's no coincidence that now we're under attack. Our people are being disappeared right here, right now, in Reading and around the state. And we know that right now, I'm sorry? Ice. Yes, ice. Great. Um, right here in Reading, uh, we know at least five raids so far in the last month. Um, that's happening around the state. Also, we now have our sheriff who is threatening to invoke the same rules that um, sh the sheriff in Monaco County and Phoenix in uh, Arizona did. Um, we are not confused. They are coming after us because they, they know that we are organizing and being effective voices for progressive change. I also have to say, um, we do lobbying, we go on the offensive, um, but we also actually do believe in obstruction. We believe that in the times of Mussolini, in the times of Hitler, we needed more obstructionism, and we believe right now that is also true. So you might find us tomorrow lobbying, the day after that you might find us chained uh, to the door of someone's office. Um, so if you support all of that, 
Um, please come and visit us. And there's a red basket on our table. There's been a great fundraising surge uh, for many national organizations, not local organizations. That red basket holds money if you put some in. Um, so, <laughs> Help provider of any kind that doesn't get 
Medicaid reimbursement for the services we provide, then at least 50% of our health centers nationally will have to shut down. We are proud to provide health care for everyone regardless of race, income, immigration status, insurance status, gender identity, sexual orientation, and we're going to keep our doors open for as long as we can, but we need everyone's help if we're going to do it. Thanks so much. My name is Les Stark, and I'm the Executive Director of the Keystone Cannabis Biz Coalition along with Erica. And uh, we're a statewide organization that's fighting for the decriminalization of marijuana. Right now, there's 25,000 people a year that are arrested for either the possession, the cultivation, or the sales of marijuana. 20,000 about of, of those are arrested for small amounts of marijuana. When they're arrested, uh, their lives are oftentimes ruined or severely interrupted by these arrests. That means that unless we make changes to the law, over the next 10 years, over 200,000 Pennsylvania citizens will have their lives ruined or severely interrupted by arrest. So we got an industrial hemp bill passed, we got um, uh, the medical cannabis bill passed, and the next step is statewide decriminalization. Decriminalization is not legalization, it's not the same thing. But it's our next achievable victory, and we think that if we have enough help, we can win this year. Uh, thank you. We'll be over there. Hi. Uh, my name is Jessica Rothschild. I'm here today as the board president of Equality Pennsylvania, and I'll talk in a moment about what that is. I live in Scranton, and uh, I'm a pretty good example of how to make a second career out of activism. I work as a physical therapist during the week and all my nights and weekends and free time is devoted to activism and of course also to my wife and our puppy. Uh, <laughs> I, won't, I won't forget about that. Um, and there's many groups and organizations that I can speak to as well so if you come up uh, to my table uh, we can talk about a few things. Uh, in addition to my work with Equality Pennsylvania, I'm also in the Emerge program, and Walker Bayashi is the executive director, as she already mentioned, uh, which means that I am looking to run for office in the future. <laughs> as scary as that sounds, uh, but Emerge is an amazing network of women and a great training program uh, that I really think will help me to get to that place. Uh, and I'm, I've also been involved with the Ready to Run program, which also trains women uh, to run for office. So a few of those organizations. Uh, I'm a commissioner on the State Commission for Women. Uh, I'm very proud to work with Governor Wolf on instituting policies uh, for women. And uh, as for Equality Pennsylvania, that's the statewide LGBTQ organization as we work on advocating for the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer uh, community. That was how I got to know uh, Brian and Peter and Anne originally too. Uh, and I've been president of our board for a few years now. Uh, we've done a lot of work over that time, uh, but one of the things we've been working on uh, most diligently has been uh, the Pennsylvania Fairness Act, which unfortunately still hasn't passed. Um, came close this past summer. But uh, what that legislation was proposed to do would be to amend the Human Relations Act to add sexual orientation and gender identity or expression uh, so that we have protections in, place, in workplaces, in housing, and public accommodations, which the state of Pennsylvania currently uh, does not. And there's only, there's 17 states uh, in our country that do offer those protections and we need Pennsylvania uh, to be number 18. Uh, so we have been working uh, with municipalities to get ordinances passed in the meantime uh, since the legislation, the state legislature has been uh, uncooperative. And I think it's been introduced probably around 13 years ago. Uh, so it's been, it's been a long time. Uh, but we have other uh, policies that we're working on. We work very closely with Governor Wolf's administration. So I, I don't want to take too much of the time. I, I know I only had a minute, uh, but please come to talk to me some more if you're interested in LGBTQ advocacy or some of the other uh, organizations I mentioned. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name. 
name is Michael. Uh, I guess I reached the peak of my political career when I was 19 years old, and I worked in the fundraising department of the Democratic National Committee in D.C. I grew deeply disillusioned with politics after that. I'm now, in my, uh, myself. I'm now in my fifth and final year of rabbinical school right outside of Philadelphia. I'm a part of a group called March on Harrisburg. We are a group trying to restore trust between citizen and government and to help really heal our wounded democracy. We believe that a representative democracy is a marriage between citizen and state, and the terms of that marriage have grown quite abusive at times. Um, the relationship has grown distant and indifferent at best. So we are trying to pass three bills in Pennsylvania. First one, gift ban. Uh, right now you can give your state legislators anything you want to, new car, expensive vacations, etc. I'm happy to say all three legislators in this room are uh, sponsors of SB, either SB 132 or HB 139 to ban gifts. Uh, second, gifts are really bribes, that's the euphemism. Uh, second one is end gerrymandering. We're working very hard to pass SB 22 and its companion bill that will soon be introduced in the House. Uh, third one is automatic voter registration. We want to open up our representative democracy, make it much more inclusive. Uh, representative, I think you were five when we met with you, and same for you, Senator. And I also believe with the representative in the back. Uh, all three are fives across the board, which is perfect sport. <laughs> We set a plan to pass these bills. In its first step, we're meeting with all 253 state legislators uh, before May 13th. We've met with 40 out of 50 senators and the majority of the House as of right now. Our second phase is from May 13th to May 21st. We are marching from Thomas Paine Plaza in Philadelphia to Harrisburg, to the state capitol, arriving on Sunday, May 21st. That Wednesday in between, I believe it's May 17th, we will be in Reading for a full day. We're doing our rest day right here. Um, I do think we're saying in this church. Is that just for Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and then from uh, Monday, May 22nd to Thursday, May 25th, we will be at the state capitol and we will be doing a combination of intensive lobbying and nonviolent civil disobedience to force the issue and get our bills out of committee and to the floor for a vote. It will be very focused, very pragmatic nonviolence, and it's really all designed to force a loving intervention between citizen and state so that we can see each other as human beings and go from there. Uh, a lot of that has been at the national level, but we've certainly had our fair 
parish here of it uh, in Pennsylvania. So we doubled our uh, membership uh, in the past, like, well, past couple of months. It has doubled and it continues to grow. So just as an FYI, we are ramping up some of our capacity and expanding it. So we've had a lot of interest in volunteering. We have things that we are inviting you all to do, but please be patient with us as we have typically and traditionally focused on lobbying and litigation. So, um, and I'll just sort of say, just as a, a quick um, plug, this is from our legal team. We are currently um, actively searching for cases where if there has been an ICE raid, if, the, if ICE has detained someone with a green card or who is a US citizen, um, we are looking like actively for cases to litigate. So if you all hear anything like that, please get in touch. Please, please. It's it. Okay, we need to talk. All right, great. So I think you all sort of know what we do and come visit me at the table. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. My name is Jeff Dempsey. I serve as the program director for Ceasefire VA. I'm not going to waste my minute talking about the organization. I'll be outside for that. I'm going to spend this time talking about two things and their bits of advocacy. Number one, I'm assuming that most of you here live in Berks County. I'd like to highlight the fact that of all of the gun violence prevention votes, all of them that have come up in the state legislature, there have only been two people in Berks County, Senator Schwang and Representative Colton Barone, who have made good votes. So if you care about something like background checks, if you care about something like making sure the NRA cannot sue our cities and towns, I would encourage you to talk to your representative because statistically speaking, they are not with you on this issue, including the gentleman that was here earlier who sat in the back, the representative from Brecknock and several other parts of this county. So if you care about gun violence prevention, please, please talk to your state representative and your state senator. And the second bit of advocacy I'd like to highlight is the fact that this Tuesday, the state senate will consider a piece of legislation in a committee, in the state government committee, that would allow membership organizations to sue cities and towns that pass their own gun laws. When I say membership organizations, they can be organizations that don't have gun owners in them, and they can be organizations that have not been affected by municipalities that pass their own gun laws. Senator Schwang luckily stood up and fought against this legislation in the Senate last session. Unfortunately, they're bringing it again. It not only changes the very essence of who may file lawsuits, but it also subjects uh, and hamstrings local lawmakers. Some of you want to run for office. You literally want to be allowed to pass the sorts of laws that you think make your community safer just so that a cottage industry of attorneys can take money away from our cities and towns. If you have a problem with this legislation, which will be discussed in a, in a uh, committee hearing on Tuesday, Right, so no public information is given about this. It's barely sunshine at the most minimum level, and they're not actually hearing testimony from experts. If you have a problem with this, please contact your state senator, and I'll be outside answering questions on behalf of Ceasefire. Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm Josh McNeil from Conservation Voters of Pennsylvania. I'm a cisgender white male. I'm here to apologize to all of you. <laughs> For the last few centuries, we're, there are a few of us who are working on the right side of things. Um, I have a seven-month-old son. I'm going to miss his, birth, uh, his, his bedtime tonight uh, because I'm here because Burst County is so interesting. There are the highest number of environmentalists in this county, in any county in the state. And some, of, and some of the worst representation in the state. That is an opportunity. That's what we're here to fix. Conservation Voters does the politics to the environment. We are looking for environmentalists to run. The question was asked, where do you get money? If you're willing to run against lead in the water, if you're willing to, want it, willing to run against fracking, if you're willing to fight pipelines and put the environment first, you come to me for money. That's the answer to that question. We have raised $200,000 already to run candidates in 2018 for the state legislature and put the environment first. So I'm here today to talk to people who are interested and know people who are interested. We're willing to back you. We're willing to make it possible, but we need people here to make the commitment to run. Thank you. Steve, would you like to speak? He doesn't want to speak. 
So Steve El Marzuki, former head of the um, Islamic Center in Reading. Hi everybody, Kevin Bowder, Chairman of Berks County Democratic Committee. Um, we're a little different than everybody else you've heard here today. Uh, they have their issues, their things that they focus on. Our focus on is to get Democrats elected in Berks County. We do the legwork, we do the phone calling, knocking on the doors, recruiting candidates. Um, we need like 300 more to be schwanks. So, Please come see myself and Linda Laura, the assistant uh, chair, back in the room. We'll be happy to talk to you. Thank you. Are we ready to roll? Yeah. Go ahead. One more. Oh, and Karen, right? How can I forget? Karen. <laughs> I'm Lily Cooper. I'm the vice president of the local League of Women Voters of Brooks County. We are interested in all things political. And we are nonpartisan. We are celebrating our 75th year in Berks County, and we have been involved with political action in all ways, but it's always topical, nonpartisan. So if you're interested in becoming a member of the League, visit with me. Thank you. You already know who I am, and I'll make it really short, but let me just explain it because I know some people don't know what fracking is. It's natural gas drilling. It goes into shale formations because it's not easy to get to conventional sources of natural gas any longer or oil. Um, and so they actually have to go into deep shale formations and fracture the shale open. And so it's a form of fossil fuel extraction. While every reputable climate scientist is telling us we have to leave 80% of fossil fuels in the ground, Pennsylvania is actually expanding the market for fossil fuel extraction. Our Democratic governor, is allowing something called the pay program to go into an effect that actually takes actually takes $24 million away from alternative energy and puts it toward building new pipelines. I mean, that's the sort of thing that's happening here. We are expanding the market in various ways. We have 40 new, uh, 47 new natural gas power plants that have already been approved by the DEP. So here in Pennsylvania, we fight to protect our communities. Right here in Berks, we're fighting pipelines and power plants as we speak. So come talk to me about it.